Well, none of these things are going to get passed unless the majority of city commissioners vote for them, sometimes twice in a row if they're ordinances, once if it's resolutions. So there is obviously compliance to make these changes from the city commissioners. They're making the votes. Well, Commissioner Yates uh, seems to be saying to us that a lot of these things are, are coming up on the agenda to the, a surprise of all the commissioners. I, I mean, do you get that sense or do you think that other commissioners are good with what he is putting out there? Um, it's a little bit of yes and no. At the last workshop, we saw the commissioners um, uh, debate about whether or not to limit public comment. They nixed that. They said no. But then at their next regular meeting, they voted to move their uh, commission meetings to 10 a.m. in the morning, which will make it a lot harder for working class families to make it to those meetings to be heard. Andrea, have, have you ever seen anything quite like this? I haven't, <laughs> and I can tell you they have ample responsibility under the law to maintain access uh, to the public. And if they do run afoul of the law at any point, this pattern of behavior will definitely work against them if someone chooses to litigate any particular issue. Well, let's take some of these things one by one. Uh, if you remember, uh, first it, they wanted to treat all news media as one single entity when making public records requests. So if, let's say, uh, the, the newspaper uh, put in a uh, information request that took more than 15 minutes and then I came in to do the same, I would be charged immediately for that. Then there was also you know, public comment uh, at meeting and limiting that, and even uh, the public's right to have other kind of events at, uh, at City Hall. Is there any precedence for any of that? Well, not really. I mean, government leadership has a certain amount of flexibility, but they do have limits on what they can do that are defined by the Constitution and the ordinances. Uh, the question is, are they looking for the floor they won't stoop beneath, or are they looking aspirationally to provide access to their constituents? They should be doing the latter, and they do have a responsibility under the Florida Constitution to be reasonable in their response to access, at least with regard to the Public Records Act, so they need to tread very carefully. Michael, what's the history of this? Has there always been an attitude in Northport that was not always friendly to divulging public information? Actually, um, you know, I've only been covering the state of Northport for three months, but knowing the research that I've done, no, actually, um, Northport uh, takes pride in the fact that it's open to its residents, that the residents can come to their meetings. In fact, that, that's one of the things that they point out about themselves, how they're different from other uh, city and county governments nearby. So it's actually a little disheartening to see them move to make changes that would limit that simply because other cities like the city of Venice perhaps has an earlier start time to their meetings. That's, that's not the Northport culture that we're used to seeing. All right, so, so what is happening here? Is, is, uh, is this a matter, again, of just a city attorney who is doing this, or it, did new people come into the city commission who are, um, want to restrict or don't want to have to answer a lot of the questions from the public? It's hard to tell, but we know that these changes to the public records policy, to who can access City Hall and when, to um, the meeting times, to the proposition of perhaps changing public comment that was, I should repeat, nixed, um, that has all happened since September. It's all been very recent that these things have come up on the agenda and have been voted on. Andrea, I know you're monitoring uh, this, but what are the chances that litigation is going to have to be, be filed to uh, get the commissioners to give the public access to their own city hall? Well, that really depends on how they respond to the backlash of their own constituents. But as I said, their persistence in, in um, raising uh, the barriers to their constituents really increase the probability that they are going to be sued by one of their own voters. And, and again, with other area communities around here, have other communities tried to limit even uh, you know access to public information with with uh, public records requests you do see that from time to time and it generally does draw litigation and is corrected that way um, one thing that you know it would seem is that if they're having difficulty with public records they really could take advantage of the advances in, in technology and look for trends in what records are most frequently sought and give them access online so that they don't have to individually respond to each request. That's what the larger communities are doing. Northport growing into a larger community should follow suit. And that's what they cited as a problem, that all these public records requests were taking up uh, an increasing amount of time of city workers to comply with them. Is, isn't that not correct? That, that is correct. That's what they cited for the change. But it is confusing because simply shortening the amount of time before they charge someone for public records uh, 
I don't see how that's going to help fix the problem unless they're trying to deter people from making public records requests by imposing more fees. But that doesn't that seems misguided. And when it comes to the public's use of the building itself, uh, in many communities around Florida and around the country, uh, you know, different groups are able to, and many times free of charge, use City Hall for meetings, for clubs and, and groups like that. Uh, is there any precedence for, for trying to limit the, the public's right to their own building? I'm not aware of any precedent for it. Uh, and I would caution to be careful that they don't set that precedent as being the first to really um, I don't know that they can declare a building non-public that's paid for out of the public treasury and is city hall. That, that does seem to be a very uh, aggressive thing to do. And when it comes to uh, moving the meetings to the morning and limiting public comment to once a, a month, have they been having problems there with, uh, with people coming in and, and trying to take up too much of the commission's time with, with public comment or being unruly in any sort of way? Uh, that's a good question. Now, I, I should reiterate that they did not move forward at this point with limiting public comment to once a month. Um, but they did move forward with moving the meetings to 10 a.m. And, you know, they, they say that that's for the convenience of them, that they're in the meetings for several hours at a time. But... It shouldn't be about the convenience of the city staff, city commissioners, or even us journalists. It should be about the convenience of the constituents that need to come to right. those meetings. And one last question. We have less than a minute. But when the com Commissioner Yates said that things were popping up, that, uh, that commissioners were not briefed and they did not know were in the agenda, does that happen often? Uh, and is it, is it possible that the city attorney can do that without telling commissioners beforehand? Well, the commissioners have the responsibility for leadership in the community, and a, and a city attorney, any city attorney, has responsibility for guiding his client, which are the commissioners, and they have to be careful that the roles don't come, become reversed. Because if a city attorney leads the client into litigation, it causes a problem. It really needs to be uh, more leadership from the commission themselves. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Andrea, Michael, thank you very much for joining us.